Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, God. Already off to a bad start. He got water in the bowl, which is also the enemy of chocolate tempering. <laughs> Once again, we are back in the test kitchen. And today, we're talking about, oh, you want me to, the hardest kitchen skills to master. The hardest things to do. Yes! Very <laughs> unpredictable with this improvisation so what? For me, the hardest things are the things I haven't spent any time doing. Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing process, refining, refining. It's not so much like this end goal. There's a sliding scale, right? There's yeah. like cracking an egg one-handed which I'm on record as saying I would master in 2019, still have not done it. Okay, um, I think we can do that. I had a hard time coming up with something. I mean, there are a lot of things that I consider that were hard throughout my career, <laughs> but I couldn't pinpoint one that was the hardest. Yeah, I think the hardest skill to master is like being consistent. When was the last time you debone a whole chicken? Right. I don't, I don't remember. Jacques Pepin's whole deboned chicken yeah. is the thing that I still can't do without watching the YouTube. I don't think people at home feel a fish because they don't want to make the mess and have all, like, all that skin and scales all over your counter and your sink. Learning how to fillet a round fish. The smaller fishes, larger fishes, flat fishes. A round fish in the salmon family as opposed to all the other ones. But then also like the goal for no matter, whenever you're breaking down an animal is to like have little to no waste. When it's your first time, there's a big chance you don't want to screw it up. Right. You know, because once you do, you, pay money for you the can't fish. fix it. Yeah. I chose something that I can't do, which is pleating a dumpling the way that, that um, you do for a soup dumpling, which when we were developing this recipe and Claire was working on this, you're supposed to get 18 for folds. It took her like weeks to get even into the teens. And I think I tried one day with her and I got like 10 and they look terrible. Doesn't matter which direction you go, just wanna rotate the dumpling, creating a series of pleats and pinching. And the object is to get 18, which is the lucky number in Chinese culture. If you have air in the dumpling, it's gonna expand as it steams and it can burst the dumpling. I'm just gonna take all those edges and pinch them together to seal. Give it a little okay. bit of a rotation. A and there's your soup dumpling. Oh, I'm trying to do exactly the way Claire described, where I'm pulling it up and folding it back on itself to make a pleat. <laughs> but I'm like not moving. And the more pleats you make, the sh less amount of wrapper there is. What are you doing? I don't know. I'm gonna rush and do it even worse for the second half because I'm frustrated. Do you do that? No, I just slowly like to fail and <laughs> suffer. <laughs> this is not a good one at all. That's a lot better than mine. A tremendous amount of disappointment. I think the key with this is um, repetition. Learning from someone who's going to correct you, first of all, and then throwing away your bad ones. It was like when Molly and I were making mozzarella, and the guys were doing every time we thought we made a good one, they would laugh at us and throw it back into the hot water. I still find it very challenging to make the perfect potato chip. I would say impossible. It's really hard. You know what's really funny? In college, for some reason, I had this thing where I was like, I'm gonna be the guy that makes my own potato chips. And it was never a good idea. I think it's always an A for effort sort of project. It is. It's actually extremely hard to get perfectly even slices of potato all the way through. So you get and a potato chip that's overcooked on one side or undercooked on the other. And you can like see those in the bag sometimes. Yes. That where there's like one sad curled up brown part of the chip <laughs> and then there's this other part that's kind of like yeah. flaccid and... These big companies have like these wild industrial machines that do things that could never be replicated. That's true. In a kitchen. Potatoes, like once you slice them, immediately start to release all their starch. You need to soak the potato slices in water, wash away, like physically wash like, away some of the, the starch. starch off of there. Um, and then let them dry before they can even go into the fryer. Basically, if you don't get rid of some of that starch in some way or another, the chip will end up just like cooking through too fast and it'll, it'll burn, it'll just overly brown. I feel like deep frying for a lot of people can be kind of intimidating. It's a lot of oil. And then in the case of potato chips, it also matters like what temperature you're cooking them at. So sure. like for most foods that are fried, chicken, french fries, whatever, yeah. Like you want to do that at a standard 350. Yeah. Um, but potato chips, because they're so much more delicate, I would go a little lower. A little gentler on the heat. Yeah. I think one of the, the most difficult skills is tempering chocolate. 
his chocolate plays by its own rules. It and, is temperamental, if you will. Yeah, for sure. Even Claire, you know, has had issues with tempering chocolate. We're talking about actually getting it to temper so that at room temperature, you know, you bring it into a working temperature of like for dark chocolate, like this would be like 88 or 89 degrees. And then, you know, it'll basically like set at room temp. So melting it and then adding unmelted chocolate to the melted chocolate to slowly bring it down. That is one method. And that's what I think what we'll do here today. We want to melt it, but like maybe 90% of the way. I still want a few bits of chocolate in there so that we don't bring the temperature of the chocolate too high. It's sort of like carryover cooking. Carry Once over it's like cooking. it's like 90% melted, you pull it off and let that extra let 10% sort of happen organically. Exactly. That's the other thing about tempering chocolate. It's kind of boring. Yeah. It's like, not like razzle dazzle, like, you know, boom. Unless flambe. you're doing. Yeah, unless you're doing that, Which, but we're not doing that. kind of disappointed you're not doing that, to be honest. I don't, like, I don't know anything about chocolate. I don't even eat the damn stuff. Oh, that's right. It's like Molly and I do this hilarious thing where I pretend to forget that she eats chocolate. People give me crap about not liking bananas, about not liking peanut butter. Seafood. But like, to me, that's like, no, I, seafood's fine. Calm down with that. That's how rumors get started. Okay, <laughs> so... So, um, <laughs> so don't you feel like you're almost there? Yeah, we're close. The tempered chocolate that we're adding from the package is going to start the chain reaction of like all those um, constituent fat molecules in the cocoa butter. Oh boy, big man on campus behind you. Adam can crack an egg one handed. He can? Yeah, he's, you haven't seen him do it? Add. Like, oh, really well. Prove it, bro! Are you tempering the chocolate? We're tempering. But in the meantime, it's so really boring. We'd love to see you crack an egg. It's oh, a lot wonderful. of pressure. <gasps> oh, no. This and is you, the coolest like thing about you. The drum. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Confidence. Make. Don't let us down. Ooh. Was, you did it. Not, yeah, that's, you did it. It's not bad. Yeah. I definitely did not have the flare on that. We can work on the flare. Stirring obviously helps cool it, but you don't want it to cool too quickly or overshoot your window. So when I feel like I'm in my working temp, rather than just like laying all the chocolate out or starting to dip things, I'll take like a little parchment like tester strip, just get a super thin layer and let super that set sense. up, you know, in like a minute or two. Should we transfer it into a different bowl that doesn't have all this heat retained? Ooh, we're coming, we're flying now. Okay, that was a great idea. <gasps> Never get Rocks! What? No, 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 no. We're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Oh, no, no, it's at 89. Stop. No, That's we're good, fine. we're good, we're That's good. That's fine, Jesus. Forgot, like, how jumpy you make me when you're, like, <laughs> shouting and, like, hollering. This is how you temper, right? Yeah, for sure. All right, so I'm just trying to preserve <laughs> the heat we've got in the chocolate right now. I'm like really invested in this. See, you can't walk away now. No. Even if it is chocolate. Yeah, I love chocolate. Your dedication to the craft <laughs> won't what let if you walk away. all of a sudden away. now I just love chocolate? I'm like, I've tempered, I see to its soul, and now I love it. That would be great because then I wouldn't have to change. I know. I'm thinking about going to see a hypnotist about it. Are you serious? Yeah. Do you think I should? Yeah. I was, maybe I'll do a gun, go find Can you me. like, can they make like, like, can they throw a few other things in there? Excuse what other me? behaviors are we trying to get out of, of, uh, of Molly? I just the chocolate? I don't think there's anything else I need to work on. Just the chocolate, Thank okay. You, very you heard much. it here first. <gasps> all right, if it were just like a tiny bit firmer, it, we'd be able to pop it There it, it is, up. there it is. So we're good. Tempered chocolate, That's everybody wins. Chocolate. And Molly's gonna go see that hypnotist and it's gonna be fine. I ate it. Oh my God, it's Toasty, so nutty, earthy. No. Nope, no. Chocolatey, <laughs> nope. okay. So the dish that took me a really long time to master was alu paranta. So basically you're looking for like 80% potato to 20% bread. Bad alu parantas are like too much bread, too little potato. The first trick is making sure your potatoes are like really nice and smooth. What we found is the best way to get really, really smooth potatoes is to grate them. So oh. once we boil the potatoes, we peel them and then you grate them on like basically large holes. If potatoes are lumpy, that's 
that they're gonna poke through the dough uh-huh. and it's gonna start to fall apart when you're stuffing them. You wanna make big balls of potatoes and small balls out of your roti. You almost treat re- like filling parantas with potatoes like they're dumplings. You have to really seal the top. Like you have to bring all the sides together. You have to seal. I usually like twist it a little bit mm-hmm. so that it won't spill out because this the next part is really hard, which is you flip your ball and then you have to roll it out and you can't put too much pressure on it, rolling it too thin that the potato gets exposed. Once a little potato gets exposed, a lot of potato gets exposed. I usually use a cast iron to do my parantas. It just seems to work better that way. A little oil in the pan, you put your paranta in. As soon as you start to see bubbles and spots, you flip it and then you take your ghee or or your oil and you put a spoonful and then you just spread it around. So there's a double basting. This may not be a lecha paranta where like the butter is literally built into the layers of the dough, but it's still gonna taste like really, really luxurious. It's very frustrating to describe food and not have it in front of me. I know, I know. (laughs) Now I'm like really craving paranta. Now we're just gonna leave this shoot really hungry. So the hardest thing for me to learn Mm -hmm. how to make was tadig. Mm -hmm. So that's when you steam basmati rice and you have like a really crispy, crispy bottom. You can have crispy potatoes at the bottom, crispy pita. My favorite is rice. I love, love, love that dish. It's so amazing. So good. And my mother-in-law makes the best tadig in the world. I've been trying for years to get it as good as hers. And she finally told me the secret. Which is? I'm on the edge of my seat here. Hold tight, guys. Oh, wow. A terrible pot. Oh. Huh. You gotta get good rice and you gotta get a sh- pot. Good rice sh- pot, got it. Rinse the rice really well. Soak it if you have time. 15 mm-hmm. minutes will help, two hours is perfect. Don't go okay. more than that. Just like an al dente pasta, you wanna see the core okay. in the middle of it. So you wanna mix like a cup of rice with a little bit of yogurt. The uh-huh. yogurt helps to keep your like crispy, yep. ricey cake together. You lay your rice down, the rice that you've mixed with yogurt, and then you pile up the rest of the rice on top Mm -hmm. into like a pyramid. You don't want it to touch the sides. Poke some holes in there, Mm -hmm. drizzle over a little like saffrony water. Mm -hmm. I like to put some tea. Okay, yes. And then then now we're gonna steam. When you're ready to steam, it's also really important to wrap your lid with a towel. This is gonna catch the steam so that the steam doesn't like sink back down and make the bottom soggy. Wow. This is, I'm just learning so many tips and tricks. I don't know if I'm just going too fast and there's no, too no, much information. No, no, please keep going. You do a just, flip. Just, just do a flip. Has it ever just like totally fallen apart? Yeah, of course. You can either like do it like a cake, but what I usually end up doing is I scoop off the rice and then I flip out the tadik part. That's it, that's my story. This is called a cornet. Says, you spell it C-O-R-N-E-T, but it's French, so you don't say the T at the end. It's cornet or a paper cone and <laughs> You have to do it a bunch of times or enough yeah. times to muscle. kind of get, yeah. So a muscle memory. A little halfsy? You do it in halfsy. Yeah. I'm gonna do a small one. Go. Whoa, 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 step by step, Gabby. So what, you did point up like this, look. Yes, anyway, step by step. it's an isosceles triangle. So then you cut it. Nice. You go A, B, C. B as in boy, oh as boy. As in Brad. Oh boy, as in Brad. A needs to meet C. Like that? No, like this, like curl it. Curl it uh, and go up. Okay, so you want to curl it. And go up. And touch points? Mm, yes. A little more. Hold it like this. Yeah. And then get the other one and meet them in the top. The people like, Brad cannot make a paper cone, you see? I can. You got it! Brad, you got it! Hold it here with this there. And then this. And meet it over there. Oh. And then pull both up until you get like, oh. you got it? No hole in there. And now you fold it in. In? To close it, yes. Okay, I like Look, that. I'm gonna give you tape. I think you have to make it once or twice with your hands to uh, to figure that out. I feel like putting the ABC makes Kinda it more helpful. visual. Yeah. Those were some difficult skills, but we mastered them. Yeah, I mean, I hope I did. With time and practice. And you can too. Simple technique, whether you know whether it's simple or difficult, um, it's just a matter of doing it is how you learn. Not just seeing it once, but doing it. Trust your elders, basically. I feel like we both learn these techniques from yeah. our elders. Th- there's a reason for all of their uh, perfect Aunties food. have infinite wisdom. Yeah. If you want to achieve mastery in the kitchen, you read Bon Appetit to subscribe to our magazine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>